Okay, well, welcome to uh, the birth of psychology um, video. And one of the things I want to make a comment about before we get started is really um, having a clear understanding as to where we come from um, has a direct connection to where we are today. And there are two different themes I want you to pay attention to, even as we talk about the birth of psychology. Because uh, psychology really had a soul in a lot of ways. I mean, it was a philosophy and, and grew out of philosophy. And there were forces within psychology that, had, that wanted to uh, really, in one way, you, if you think about it, is legitimize psychology in the eyes of the world. And, and they did that because they thought, well, what we're going to try to do is turn it into a science and that's and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail the other th the two other things I want to mention to you one is continuity and continuity is really <clears throat> uh, where psychology came from and where we are today the big questions of psychology are still present with us today for example one of the gr bigger ones is is uh, nature or nurture that that one uh, uh, question, if you will, is still with us. We're debating it at a far higher level than we used to, but it still is one of the big questions of the day. And actually, you know, when you think about what's happened in Colorado over the last month or so um, since, <clears throat> since the shootings in Aurora, was this guy born this way or was it something that he learned? There's your nature nurture. Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is discontinuity and the way we think about human nature um, and the way uh, whoops continuity and the way that we actually look at human nature uh, and study human behavior has uh, come a long way one of the videos we'll look at at the very end of the semester in social psychology is just exactly uh, how we studied aggressive behavior and or even role behavior if you will and so uh, our ways of understanding is very um, a, a human behavior itself is very discontinuous with where we once were two of the uh, more profound um, uh, influences at the beginning of the history and birth of psychology were two people uh, the first person was a guy by the name of uh, Wilhelm Wundt, which is always a fun one to say. And the other guy, which was who was actually a student of Wundt, was uh, a guy by the name of Edward Bradford Titchener. Uh, and Titchener uh, actually took uh, Wundt's ideas uh, one step further. But Wundt's ideas really started out initially in examining the mind of humans in very much of a physical sense. So his idea was, well, if, if, uh, if physicists study atoms um, and uh, biologists study uh, cells and molecules and so forth, then surely we're able in psychology to begin to look at what he called the atoms of the mind. And this is, was his attempt to really begin to look at uh, um, the, a physical, structural aspect. And these were the two major ideas that, uh, that Wundt uh, represents. And then later, uh, where we begin to look at functionalism, uh, we, we begin to look at behaviors themselves and so forth. So, um, uh, Darwin ushered in that, but these guys were very much of the structuralists, and they wanted to discern um, the elements that went with uh, the structure of the mind. And so what Titchener actually discovered and began to do is something they referred to as introspection. Now today, um, we talk about introspection as being thoughtful. And, and what Titchener attempted to do was to uh, develop an actual experimental procedure 
to uh, examine inwardly uh, the idea of what happens in one's mind. Obviously, one of the big errors here is observer bias. When I'm looking at uh, myself, I have a particular bias when I look at what I do. And so the idea that happened and began to fall apart ultimately is the unreliable nature of, of looking at myself. And that's really what ended up discrediting a lot of the structuralists, um, namely Wundt and Titchener. What you often see in psychology is is competing schools of thought. And so the same thing is true here. I mentioned earlier the structuralists, which we, we talked about with uh, Wundt and, and, and Titchener, structuralists. And also uh, we have the functionalists or the functionalism school. And the, the functionalists we're looking at, as the name suggests, is how do things actually function, functionalism. And one of the key people here is William James. This is this gentleman. And, and uh, his student, which you, what you'll often see in the history of psychology, is there is a, uh, a beginner or founder, and then you have somebody who's a student. And Mary Calkins, uh, which is this young, ravishing woman, was uh, one of his students that began to uh, popularize his uh, way of understanding things. So uh, the, the influence for functionalists was Darwinian thought and uh, what behavior and how it um, uh, impacted the actual outcome. Um, thinking developed because it was adaptive. Uh, smelling, um, other aspects of one's functioning uh, were developed because uh, it was adaptive and that was the, the assumption under, uh, under um, Darwin was the adaptive power of, um, uh, of developing certain skills and so forth. So the functionalists and the structuralists uh, reign supreme Mary Calkins was one of the students of William James. The one thing that you probably should should be thankful for is that you're not reading William James' two-volume edition of uh, of the of psychology. Uh, the last uh, thought or the last uh, count was that uh, it was about 1,500 pages uh, in two volumes. Uh, the, he immediately uh, released his. Uh, uh, forget what it was I think it was the function or the um, uh, the um, uh, history of psychology or exploring psychology and he immediately released an abridged version which brought it down to a whopping 500 and some odd pages so um, be thankful that your your book is only as big as it is Mary Calkins um, probably is distinguished because she went on to become uh, APA president which was a big deal at the time to have a, a woman as a president of, of a major organization in, um, uh, in, in the United States at least.